Mountaineers, I owe you all a huge apology. So last week, I introduced Pastor John as our last Who's in the Cabin speaker, but I misspoke. So I'm correcting it today. Today is really our last day of Who's in the Cabin. And I hope that you all have learned a lot about sharing love while being in the cabin. And that you remember that Jesus' love is bubbling over on the inside of you. So you know the question is, well, who's in the cabin today? Well, let me tell you a little something about him to see if you can figure out who he is. He is the husband to one wife. Praise God. He is the father to several children. He's the grandfather of 12. I know, it's a lot of grandchildren, right? And he served 27 years between the Army and the Army Reserves. He loves to hunt and fish, but guess what else? He also loves people, which is why he serves as one of our congregational care pastors here at the Mount. And is none other than Pastor Marcus Northam. So, what I want you to do is, I want you to roll your shoulders. I want you to roll your head. I want you to roll your arms. And I need you to have a seat and get ready to see what we can learn from Pastor Marcus Northam with our last segment of Who's in the cab? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can I blow you, Nintendo? No, it's mine. Give me Nephew, no, nephew. It's mine, sir. sir. What are you doing? What are you doing? Calm down. Listen, come here, come here. Let me tell you a story. All right? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Your uncle's always got a story to tell you. I got a good one for you today, though. I promise you. All right, listen up. It, it's coming out of the Bible, John 3.16. And it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him would not perish, but would have everlasting life. Um, and I know you're saying, come on, Uncle Marcus, why are we, why do we have to have a vacation Bible school lesson in the middle of the day when we just want to play with our toys? Well, you were in the cabin and you weren't playing fair. You weren't playing together. You were arguing. It was unnecessary. So I just want to share this story with you, my two nephews, David and John. Okay? All right. So just, just hear me out. Give me five minutes. I promise. If you give me five minutes, we'll be straight. All right. From that story, from that one verse, rather, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life. I really believe that that one verse God is really trying to help us, not just young people, but older people too, understand that we're in the cabin, so we might as well love the folks that we are in the cabin with. And part of that is by showing our love. What do I mean? All right, well, if I had to take a guess at it, I would say the first thing that this passage of scripture, or this verse tells me is that love gathers. Now you're like, man, where you get that from? Well, see what happens is, for God so loved the world. So that's everybody. That's that's not, it's inclusive of everybody. That's not, it's not just, it's not just me. It's, it's not just you. It's not just my mom or my dad or my family. It is everybody. God loves everybody. So love gathers. So if you're in a situation and everybody wants to go their own separate directions, you might want to ask the question, is love here? It is, am I demonstrating and acting like I love them when I treat them this way? Are they acting like this, that they love me when they treat me like that? Hmm. Hmm. That's a good question, isn't it? Makes you think. Love always gathers. It always pulls together. It doesn't exclude. For God so loved the world. All right? And then the second thing I think this wants us to understand is that not only does love gather, but love gives. Oh man, I know, I know, I know. I just saw y'all going back and forward. You wanted it, he wanted it. He wanted it, you wanted it. I get it. Love gives. I love you, so I give to you. God loved us, so he gave us his only begotten son. His own, y'all listen. Y'all have a couple of different toys to play with. But God gave us his only son. Think about that. His only son. So that's equivalent to 
You have one teddy bear, or you have one train, not a set, just a train. And I want you to play with it, and you don't want me to play with it. I want to play with it, but you don't want me to play with it. I want to play with it. Well, okay. God says, I will give up what I love, my son, so that everybody benefits. Which leads me to my third point. Not only does, does love gather, not only does love give, but love gets. It's true, what you send out comes back to you. So, the best way to conquer somebody being mean to you in the cabin is not to be mean back to them, but to show them love. Love on them. Try to understand where they're coming from. Everybody right now has something going on in their life because everybody's sick and tired of being stuck in the cabin. I get it. I'm tired of being stuck in the cabin. However, I got to look at what God has given me time to get together, get right. I'm able to be around my family and show them that I love them. I'm able to give them what I may or may not be getting from them. But maybe I can be the example of God's love by giving it to them. Well, you know what, David, Jonathan, I know I bored you. I told you it won't be long, let you get back to playing. But hopefully after this is over, you play a little different, play a little better, get along together a little better. Let's see. So we know that love gathers. We know that love gives. We know that love gets. But finally, love also gains. Ah, that's the beautiful part, man. When I give to you and you give to me, wow, man, it is so, so incredibly beautiful. It is awesome. When you give to me and I give to you. Uh, in fact, there was a great man who once taught us that a relationship is supposed to operate uh, or supposed to move in a certain way. And that certain way is called divine exchange. That means I know what I'm bringing to the table and you're getting from me and you know what you're getting from me. You know what I bring to the table and you're getting from me. So it's reciprocal. It means it's, I get this and you get that. So um, love gains. But the beautiful part about God's love, when we accept his son into our life, then he says, you know what? Whether you're in the cabin or outside the cabin or even when you're no longer in either place, I have a place for you that I have made in heaven. So it's okay that we are stuck in the cabin. It's all right that we got toys and we don't always want to share, but hey, if I love you, I'm going to share. I am going to give you some of what I love because that's how I show I love you because I'm not going to give you something that I don't want. I'm going to give you the very best that I have. So, in the cabin, remember, love, love each other, share, share with each other, be kind, be kind to each other. And we will make this in the cabin experience a little better. All right, y'all be blessed. Have a great time. Go back and play. Hopefully, you learn something. And uh, I won't have to hear this throughout the rest of the day. All right, at least today. Can y'all give me a break today? Uncle Marcus told us to show love. Hi, Mountaineers. Welcome back to Mountaineers Adventures. Well, last week we learned what to do when we get upset. What should we do? You got it. We're supposed to put others first. Well, we hope that you all are still putting others first in the midst of all that we're currently experiencing. Well, today, remember I told you, we're gonna learn about what happens when the prophet experiences it. A windstorm and an earthquake and a, what is hot, it's hot in here, it's hot in here, it's hot in here, it's hot in here. A blazing fire, all right? So if you're ready for our adventure, I need you to stand up and I need you to repeat after me and do what I do. Jesus is always with us. One more time. Jesus is always with us. All right, remember our prayers this month are from our mountaineers. So today 
Melanie is going to lead us in prayer. So get your hearts and minds ready for prayer. And then I want you to get up and get ready to give God praise as we sing our song of the month, This Little Light. I'll see you back in a few. God, thank you for the Thank you for looking us up this morning. Shout us in our way. Bring us in our minds. I ask that we have a great Christmas. I ask that COVID 19 goes away in 2021. I ask that you bless this whole family. I ask that you protect our family from COVID 19 and protect your mother's sleeping and water. So, in Jesus' name, amen. This is Mr. Dorian. I'm Miss Lynn. And we're coming to you now with our main point. When I feel alone, I know Jesus is with me. One more time. When I feel alone, I know Jesus is with me. All right, we'll have some friends come up and join us. Come on, friends. All right, let's try it together. Yeah. All right, let's go. When 
I feel alone, I know Jesus is with me. One more time. Oh, sorry. <laughs> You're going to cut that part out, right? All right. Three, two, one. When, when I feel, feel alone, alone, I know Jesus is with me. me. One more time. When, when I feel alone, alone I know Jesus is with me. me. All right. Thank you, boys and girls. See you later. Good morning, boys and girls. I'm Miss Lynn. And I'm Mr. Dorian. And this is lesson four. For a very long time, the world has become a very lonely place. It all started when Apple made it possible for us to surf the web, email, and text people using these little telephones in our pockets. The more people purchased these phones and became more, the more people purchased these phones and the more they became part of our daily lives, the more isolated we became. It wasn't uncommon to see families at a restaurant, at a table, not talking to each other. They were all playing separate games by themselves. You know what? And then something else happened yesterday. It really separated all of us. Do you know what that was? No. Hmm. Do you know what that was? Well, school got canceled. We couldn't go out to eat at restaurants anymore. We couldn't go to sporting events. And we had to social distance. Are you six feet away from me, Mr. Day? I am now. <laughs> no hugging, no nothing. We had to practice social distancing. Our great big old world suddenly became kind of a lonely place because we were all isolated. We couldn't see our friends. We couldn't even worship together at church. Mm. That's pretty rough, right? If you were feeling alone, at home with nowhere to go, you were not alone. Well, you were, but you were not the only person feeling that way. We all felt lonely at times. We all wondered if we would ever get back to something normal, where we would see our friends, we would be at school. Would you ever get a chance to go to a sporting event again? We wanted to see something different, see a familiar face, to give them a hug, or just to have a different conversation. Elijah certainly felt that way. The man who today is considered to be the greatest prophet in the Old Testament. He had some very lonely times. He had no home, no friends, and very few allies. And the king and queen wanted him dead. Elijah was ready to die himself. But God said he was not through with Elijah yet. God needed to build Elijah back up, get his confidence back up. And he started by reminding Elijah that he was not alone. I'm going to read our scripture lesson today. It is found in 1 Kings, chapter number 19, starting at the 9th verse. You got your Bibles? I'm going to wait for you for just a minute. Dance for us, Mr. Jordan. The old man dance. I'm waiting on them to get their Bibles. Okay, 1 Kings. Chapter number 19, starting at the ninth verse. But the Lord said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? And Elijah replied, I have zealously served the Lord God Almighty, but the people of Israel have broken their covenant with you, torn down your altars, and killed every one of your prophets. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. Go out and stand before me on the mountain, the Lord told him. And as Elisha stood there, the Lord passed by, and a mighty windstorm hit the mountain. It was such a terrible blast that the rocks were torn loose. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, there was a sound of a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and he went out and he stood 
in the entrance of the cave. And the boy said, what are you doing here, Elijah? And he replied again, I have zealously served the Lord God Almighty, but the people of Israel have broken their covenant with you, torn down your altars, and killed every one of your prophets. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. Then the Lord told him, go back the way you came and travel to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive there, anoint Hazel to be king of Aram, and then anoint Jehu, grandson of Nimshi, to be king of Israel, and anoint Elisha, son of Shephah, from the town of Abel Meholah, to replace you as my prophet. Anyone who escapes will be killed by Jehu, and those who escape Jehu will be killed by Elisha. Yet, I will preserve 7,000 others in Israel who have never bowed down to Baal or Gishon. All right, our main point. I think it's amazing that God was not in the wind or the earthquake or the fire. You would think that as powerful as God is, he would do something real big, real grand to get a bunch of attention, just like he can. But he didn't. He came in a whisper, real quiet, real still. It was as if he was telling Elijah, when you were in the cave and the world was totally silent, I was there with you in that silence. Kids, no matter how long you feel, Jesus is with you. When he returned to heaven, he did so with this promise. So I'm gonna read from Matthew chapter 28, verse 20. It says, teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. I am with you always, even to the end of age. So that means you are never alone. I'm never alone. Never, ever, ever are we alone. Even in our loneliest, darkest hour, you are never alone. I'm sure some of you have probably been home doing your schoolwork. You're doing Zoom meetings and e-learning. You got your Chromebooks and your laptops out. Or maybe you've been doing schoolwork from your phone. You're looking out the window, wishing you could be outside playing. Anywhere except home stuck in the house all day. What about you, Mr. Dorian? Yeah, I want to be out all day, be in the sun. I don't like being cold, though. <laughs> well, kids, just know that us adults we're tired of being stuck in the house too, just like you. We miss our friends, just like you miss your friends. We miss going out bowling and going to the movies and going to dinner, just like you probably miss going to the park or maybe going to play a game of basketball and just hanging out with your friends. Well, we probably took some of those things for granted before COVID-19. I know I did. What about you? Yeah, I certainly did. Yeah. Well, things have been pretty lonely sometimes since we've had COVID. And hopefully none of you got sick. And if you did, we're just gonna thank God for your healing. And we're just gonna pray for anyone else who might be sick. Yes. And although we have been alone, we know that loneliness doesn't mean we are actually alone because Jesus is always with us. It is so good to know that God's promises are yes and amen. It's good to know that when you give your heart to Jesus, the Holy Spirit dwells on the inside of you. So if it's the middle of the day or the middle of the night, you are never ever alone. You can feel alone sometimes in a crowded room full of people. Or you might actually be by yourself and still feel alone. But the great thing to know is Jesus is always with us. He'll always be there for you, you, and me. All right, so think about this. If you've never given your heart to Jesus, you can do so today. Actually, I recommend you do so right now. You can receive the gift of the Holy Spirit 
which means Jesus will be with you all day, every day. How's it make you feel? Good, huh? So try it. Why don't you give your heart to Jesus right now? Don't wait till tomorrow. Don't wait the next minute. Don't wait the next hour. Do it right now. Jesus came so he could be your savior, all of our savior, and he will be your closest friend. So whenever you feel lonely, remember Jesus is there and praise him for his never, ever, 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 never ending love. All right, Ms. Lynn, it's time to close the prayer. All right, let's bow our heads for a quick word of prayer. Dear God, we thank you for sending your son, Jesus, and we thank you for your Holy Spirit, which dwells on the inside of us. Father, we thank you for never, ever leaving us alone and always being by our side. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, boys and girls. I'm Miss Lynn. I'm Mr. Dorian. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Oh, my goodness. Where you guys been? Feels like a whole week. Wait a minute. It has been a whole week. It's been seven whole days, and I've been stuck in this stinking house with nobody to talk to. You can talk to me. I'm bored talking to you. <laughs> We've had some good talks this week, Erin. All you ever talk about is the coronavirus and the mass singer. Aren't you at least bit curious to know who the fruit salad is? No. Oh my gosh. I love my mom. Don't get me wrong. Like, I really, really, really do. Well, let's be honest. She's a mom, so she wants to talk about mom stuff. Oh my gosh, I miss my friends so much. Like, let me tell you, like Lauren and Callie and Amy and Emily and Mary and Savannah and Sydney. Oh my gosh, and Mariah and Katie and Pedro. Well, I kind of miss her a little bit, you know. Um, but I just feel lonely. And I know that my mom's here, and my dad, and my sister. Like, she's really the only one that I can talk to. I'm just used to like, all my friends, and like, we can talk about basketball, you know? Oh my gosh, and the games that we play. Oh, like everybody, like all of us, like hang out together at lunch and then after school. We just have a great time together. But now, being stuck at home, like when I get in a fight with mom, I only got my sister to talk to. And she's okay. <sighs> I talk to Jesus, you know, like I pray. Actually, thinking about it, I talk to him quite a bit. I can talk to him about anything, like especially basketball and like how amazing basketball is. And like, I've got to make the team again this year. Oh my goodness, I'm just like so excited. You know, and like when I'm sad or like lonely, like I talk to Jesus about that. And then when like mom's like, clean up your room. Clean up my room, mom. I'm gonna clean up my room. And I can just talk to Jesus about it. And I'm like in here putting away my stuff. And I'm just like, okay, Jesus, you know, like I really wish I was outside um, because I want to go to the mall. There's these new shoes that I totally want to get. And talk to Jesus a lot like he's like my best friend I just realized that wow like I could talk to Jesus when I'm sad when I'm mad when I'm lonely when I'm happy when I'm having a good day or even if I'm having a bad day he's always listening he's always there wow Jesus is pretty amazing. He's always by my side and I feel like I have this big brother who's always got my back. Oh, I've enjoyed seeing you guys this week and I'm sitting here realizing that Jesus is the best ever and that even though sometimes I might feel alone, I'm never alone because he's always with me. Me. Wow. You guys 
let me tell you something. We've had a rough 2020, some of us, but 2021 is gonna be fantastic because I want you to know that whenever you're feeling lonely, Jesus is always there. Wow, Jesus is my best friend. trail guide. All right, I have a joke for you. You ready for this? Where is King Solomon's temple? Where is King Solomon's temple? Right on the side of his head. <laughs> Y'all like that one? You like that one? I do. I love corny jokes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I love corny jokes. All right, so let me ask you something else. How many of you like breakfast cereal? Have you ever just eaten one piece? Cheerios is mine. So can you imagine just eating one of these little loops of Cheerios? Nah, I don't think so. So think about this. The manufacturers of all the cereals like Cheerios and Fruit Loops, Corn Flakes and Rice Krispies, it wasn't their intent for us to eat just one piece of cereal. It was their intent for us to eat multiple pieces of it so that we could get full. But that one piece, trying to fill up on that, it's just not right. It's just not right. You know, eating that one piece of cereal, for me, I know it would probably make me real mad. And I'd probably take that bowl of milk and throw it away somewhere. I'd still be mad though, and really, really hungry. But to think about it, 
if you add that one piece and another piece and another piece, eventually your bowl of cereal is filled with cereal and milk and something good to eat. All right, so okay, think about this. You're the piece of cereal. Again, we're talking about the maker of that cereal. They made a whole plant of cereal. And three. So think about that one piece. You and I are sort of kind of like that one piece of cereal. We were made by our creator, God, as a single person, but we weren't meant to be alone. God created us to be with others so we could be with a family. We could be with a community of believers. But sometimes, you know, we still feel lonely. And feeling alone can hit us at any time, anywhere. You could be sitting on the couch right next to your brother, your mom, whoever it is, and still feel lonely. Even when you see other people all around you, you just feel lonely. You know, when I was a kid, there was this commercial about these shoes way, way long ago before Nike came out. They were Chuck Taylor Converse, like right here. Your mom and dad probably seen those. The, co the commercial would say, Converse, they're everywhere. So guess what? Those Converse are imitating Jesus. Jesus is everywhere, all at one time. He can be anywhere he wants to be, but he's always there with us. So that means we are never alone. We're never ever alone. Remember he said that I'm here, I'm here with you until the end of the age. So when you're feeling alone, just pray, pray to Jesus. And guess what? He's gonna be there. Actually, Jesus probably wants to talk with you more than you wanna talk with him. So again, just pray and he'll be there and you will never feel alone. You will never be alone. All right, so I want you guys to have a good day, okay? And I'll see you next time, bye.
feel like Mr. Rock is doing <laughs> All right, Mrs. Darlene, she done got low, she's squatting, she's working on her knees, and she is rapping, 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 and rapping. Why was Elijah alone? Has he all the other projects that got killed, they were after his church? Absolutely. How do you think Elijah felt inside the cave? He was alone. Holy. Yes. Absolutely. How did God appear to Elijah? In a whisper. Yes, and what should we remember when we go along? Absolutely great job, everybody! <laughs> Let's see how Mountie sings the memory verse in his opera voice. Remember, it's Psalm 112, 7. They do not fear bad doors, they confidently trust the Lord to care for, for them. Oh, that was so wonderful. I need him to sing it one more time. One more time, Mountain. They do not fear bad doors, they confidently trust the can't participate in sports, and we can't go to school. But no matter how alone we feel, may we always find joy remembering that we're never alone. Because who is with us? Jesus is always with us. And may we value the time we get to spend with Jesus being near us. All right, so now what I need you to do is I need you to bow your head and I need you to repeat that. Dear God, thank you for always being with us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so our craft information today. Today or later on this week, I want you to create a sign to post on your mirror to remind you that Jesus is always with you. So maybe draw Jesus looking upon you. Jesus is with his friends. And then maybe you can put a verse at the bottom that says, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Joshua 1, 9. And so you can draw your picture and post it somewhere where you're going to see it so you can remember that Jesus is always with you and you are never alone. And remember, ask your parents to post it at MCM underscore Chesapeake on our Facebook or Twitter page. You want to be participating in 2021 because we have some special stuff that we're going to be sending out. We may even show up at your house with some things, but it's only going to be for those who's been participating. So make sure you say, Mom and Dad, can you post my pictures? Can you post me? Can you respond to Minister Elise? So we know that you are being engaging with Mountaineers Adventures. So remember, our Facebook and Twitter page are at MCM underscore Chesapeake. Well, I'm second to see us in this series. But that means we've overcome the blues. So here's my overcoming the blues song. We've given our fears to Christ. Doom, 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 doom. We know God's love never fails. Doom, 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 doom. So we're never, ever, ever, ever alone. Doom, 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 doom. Join us next week for another episode of Mountaineers Adventures. We're going to begin a new series called Not Afraid. And we're going to be celebrating Dr. Seuss's birthday next month. 
So we're gonna have all kinds of readers coming in reading Dr. Seuss books. Send us some of your favorite books and maybe we'll read one of those. All right, see you next week. Love you, bye-bye.